hi guys my name is shb justice and i welcome you all to my youtube channel in today's topic we'll be talking about animals that can live after death for some reason i will be bringing another channel into this program or let me say i'll be bringing a brother from another mother for more details and enlightenment on the topic we are about to talk about I promise you guys, you're gonna love it. The existence of life after death is a quandary that has perplexed theologians, scientists, and philosophers alike for millennia. Thus far, there is no evidence to believe that humans can return from the dead. But for animals, it is a very different story. Numerous creatures have been documented surviving without their vital organs. From poultry to amphibians, we are exploring 10 animals that can live after death. Mike the Chicken made headlines in 1945 when he amazed the public by living for 18 months without a head. The poultry from Fruta, Colorado was fed a mixture of milk and water through his neck with an eyedropper. Also known as Miracle Mike, he survived because the farmer missed his jugular vein in his brainstem when he chopped his head off with an axe. Tragically, Mike met his end choking on a corn kernel after a full year and a half of posthumous action. Part of the reason that a chicken can live without its head has to do with its skeletal anatomy, according to Dr. Wayne J. Kunzel, a poultry physiologist and neurobiologist at the University of Arkansas. The skull of a chicken contains two massive openings for the eyes that allow the brain to be shoved upward into the skull at an angle of around 45 degrees. This means that while some of the brain may be sliced away, a very important part remains. But because the brain is at that angle, says Kunzel, you'll still have the functional part that's so critical for survival intact. For those that are concerned about whether this act is humane, the chicken does not feel any pain because its somatosensory cortex is severed during this process. A planarian, or flatworm, is adapted to live both in water and dry land. Superficially, it is just a plain worm, but these creatures possess an amazing ability. They can generate new body parts a seemingly unlimited number of times. For example, a flatworm split lengthwise or crosswise will regenerate into two separate individuals. What's more, be it skin, intestine, or brain, the body part lost through cutting will simply grow back again in a matter of days. This is because unlike earthworms and other insects, flatworms don't require a heart or lungs to survive. Regeneration studies involving these animals have shown that a dismembered planarian can generate several hundred tiny animals, hence they could almost be called immortal under the edge of a knife, according to one scientist. These creatures pull off this remarkable feat by duplicating their own cells at an accelerated rate. These cells are found almost everywhere in the planarian body and behave like stem cells. They divide, renew, and can form the different cell types that have been lost as a result of amputation. In this sense, these creatures may technically live forever, even if none of the original tissue is present in the animal's body. Octopus tentacles still react up to an hour after being severed from their dead owner and even try to pick up food and feed a phantom mouth. These creatures are known for their hyper-intelligence, but the fact is that the majority of their neurons are in their tentacles, rather than their brains. And just like flatworms, octopi can regenerate their tentacles when they're cut off. In certain parts of the world, eating this dismembered, still-living tentacle is a delicacy called sannaki. Some people even eat a whole octopus while it's still alive, though this is much less common. The octopus, which you've been chopping to pieces, is feeling pain every time you do it. It's just as painful as if it were a hog, a fish, or a rabbit, if you chopped a rabbit's leg off piece by piece. So it's a barbaric thing to do to an animal, said an animal neurologist. And for some people, this cruel practice comes with just desserts. Apparently, these live tentacles are common choking hazards, and people are frequently hospitalized for complications from the dish. Though the tentacle itself cannot generate a new body, the octopus is a remarkable creature that can reproduce tentacles once they're severed. Similar to the octopus, the squid is a cephalopod that lives in the ocean and has a small internal skeleton. They play an important role in the open water food web. The two long tentacles are used to grab prey and the eight arms to hold and control it. The beak then cuts the food into suitable sized chunks for swallowing. And akin to sannaki, a dish called dancing squid is popular throughout Korea and Japan. When soy sauce is poured atop a dead squid, it begins to move frantically. The cephalopod's body lifts up and writhes in the bowl, prompting viewers to ask, is it really dead? In fact, the reason the cuttlefish appears to dance on top of the rice inside the bowl is not because it's still alive, but because latent electrical impulses are traveling throughout its muscle neurons, a phenomenon the soy sauce you pour over it before you eat it intensifies. This is part of the reason why chefs tend to kill the animals only minutes or even seconds before they're served. If you wait too long, the tissue will be too dead to dance. This is a relief for animal rights activists, because although the dish still involves the death of the animal, at least it's not tortured before it goes. 
goes. Everyone knows that turtles possess more longevity than almost any animal on Earth. These creatures can live to be about 80 years old, roughly as much as the average human lifespan. But there are a number of unique qualities that make the turtle a truly remarkable animal. For one thing, it can live without the function of its heart. Marine mammals like whales, seals, porpoises are able to shut off the circulation to all parts of their body except their brain while they dive, so the brain keeps getting oxygen. But the turtle has no such system. Its brain is simply able to go without oxygen, and turtles can be frozen in water and still continue to survive. Their circulatory systems slow down to an absolute crawl, and they can survive with oxygen deficiency for months at a time. In case you ever wondered what happens to our reptilian friends when the temperature drops below freezing, this is your answer. Though they are not technically dead, turtles can enter a fugue state and become lucid months later when they are thawed out of the ice. A Texas man was doing yard work when he spotted a four-foot rattlesnake. He beheaded the snake with a shovel, but when he went to dispose of it, the severed head bit him. According to media reports, the man received a massive dose of the snake's venom. He became seriously ill and had to be airlifted to a hospital, where he required a large number of doses of antivenom. A week later, he remains in stable condition. The snake was reported to be a western diamondback rattlesnake. It turns out a wide range of predatory snakes are capable of reacting to stimuli and lashing out at potential threats for up to an hour after being relieved of the rest of their bodies. Since their metabolisms are much slower than those of humans, their internal organs can stay alive for longer. And and naturally, they become aggressive in the throes of death, when they perceive the situation as a last-ditch opportunity to survive. In this sense, they are truly the living dead, and perhaps even more deadly than any fictional zombie. There are even reports of snakes biting themselves after death, because they perceive the movement of their own writhing body and react to it. As if snakes weren't already frightening, this fact makes them even more creepy. It is said that after a nuclear apocalypse, cockroaches will inherit the Earth, and anyone who has experienced an infestation knows that these pests are virtually impossible to kill. For example, a cockroach possesses a higher immunity against radiation than humans. It can hold its breath for as long as 40 minutes, and it can last for weeks without food. And to make them even more amazing, cockroaches can survive for up to 10 weeks without their head. Ultimately, they will pass away due to desiccation or starvation. Obviously, it is difficult to feed oneself without a mouth. The main reason that cockroaches roaches are able to survive decapitation is because they have a closed circulatory system. There are studies that go all the way back to the 1960s that focus on cockroaches' cognitive function post-mortem. They discovered that cockroaches can even learn without their brains. In the experiment, the cockroaches would be held over a saline solution that delivered a shock to one of their legs. Over time, the roaches would learn, even without a head, to try to keep that leg raised in order to avoid the shocks. This shocked scientists, and they still don't fully understand how the nervous system can accomplish this amazing task. A toad was discovered in 2016 that totally stumped scientists. By all appearances, it was normal, except for one conspicuous difference. This toad had no head or face. On closer inspection, the herpetologist who found it realized the amphibian had no eyes, nose, jaw, or tongue, meaning that it was completely missing its face. Instead of a head, the top end of the toad was covered in skin with a tiny slit. For whatever reason, the predator did not finish the job, and the toad was able to become active again on that early spring day. Amphibians are incredibly resilient, the researcher told the National Geographic. I believe the injury happened during hibernation, because it seemed to have healed over, which I don't think it would have the opportunity to have done outside the toad's hibernacula. In layman's terms, this means that the frog healed over its own mortal injury after waking from hibernation, effectively proving that it does not need its brain to function. But researchers are still perplexed by how it managed to survive and feed itself given these circumstances. This may remain a mystery until another specimen is found and studied. The truth may have far-reaching ramifications for cell rejuvenation. Pithing is a defunct procedure in which a researcher removes the brain of an animal to see how they function. The most frequently pithed animal during the 19th century seems to have been the common frog. And remarkably, frogs are able to croak, hop, fight, swim, and generally do all the things that frogs do best without the benefit of a working brain. So how exactly do they pull it off? According to an 1800s German biologist, in addition to the brain, the spinal cord is also an organ that independently produces consciousness. Thus, if the spine is intact, a frog can do anything it normally would do with any sensory information. In addition, it keeps its spatial awareness. If a headless frog is turned upside down, it will right itself. If you place it in a pool, it will swim to the edge and climb out. Though scientists are using this procedure less often due to animal cruelty concerns, it still proves that the frog's brain is not an essential part of its body. 
There is a common theme among these animals. Many of them are not reliant on their brain to function, and the common fruit fly is no exception. Researchers recently discovered that flies continue to respond to light under conditions where they shouldn't be able to, namely when their physical movement is dulled by high doses of anesthesia, and more astoundingly, when their heads have been severed from their bodies. Headless flies are known to maintain posture, walk around, and train to new circadian rhythms, engage in defensive behavior against conspecifics, and even learn to avoid a shock, and this even faster than flies with heads. That's right, for some reason flies are actually more perceptive without their head. So why is their head a hindrance and not a help? For now, science does not have an answer to this question, but it is clear that fruit flies are not reliant on their tiny brains. If you find this video interesting, please kindly like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And please don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and most especially my YouTube channel. Please don't forget to subscribe.